Hi, my name is Bohadar Ahmedov. In this video lecture, we are going to introduce the elementary row operations. If you're given a system of linear equations, how do you would solve a system? So if you remember from the school, uh, if I would like to solve a system of linear equations, I would just try to eliminate some of the variables, x1, for example, or x2, or x3 from the first, second, or the third equations. So in order to do this, I could do the three different operations. For example, the first operation I could do is I could just interchange some of the equations. For example, I could interchange the first equation with the second one. So in this case, it's going to be 2x1 plus 4x2 minus 3x3 is equal to the 1x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 is equal to the 9. 3x1 plus 6x2 minus 5x3 is equal to the 0. Basically, interchanging, interchanging the equations. I mean, and its operation is valid because it doesn't change the solution of the system. Again, so we are interested to find such a value as for the x1 an x2, an x3, so that it, it, it could satisfy all of these equations, right? And if you just interchange the equations, these values still are going to be the same, right? So we are still looking for all the same values for the x1, x2, and x3. So another interesting operation which I would do would be to just multiply an equation to the constant multiplication and equation to a constant. For example, I would be interested to multiply the first equation to the two, right? So the reason why I would do this, I would, for example, equalize x1 and x1, the coefficient wise, in the first and second equation. So that eliminate one of the x1s in the first equation or in the second equation. For example, we can multiply the first equation to the two. So let's do, let's do this. So I'm just going to copy the system. And try to work with the system now. So if I would just multiply the first equation to the t, what would happen here is that 2x1 plus 2x2 plus 4x3 is equal to the 18. 2x1 plus 4x2 minus 3x3 is equal to the 1. 3x1 plus 6xt minus 5x3 is equal to the 0, right? So if I would just multiply the first equation to the t, then I would get this system. And these two systems are, again, are equivalent, right? So they are not equal, but they are equivalent. So I could just, like, for example, sub subtract the second equation from the first one. Then in this case, I wouldn't have x1s in both of the equations. Right? So then I would have two variables only. And the third operation which I can do, third operation which I can do with the system of linear equations is the adding, adding a multiple, a multiple of an equation into the another one, into the another one. So we can multiply, so you see, so what we did in the second operation is that I multiply, I just multiply one of the equations to a constant. And, 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 and what I wanted to do is, I wanted to eliminate this xt, right? So in order to do this, I need to multiply an equation to the constant and then subtract the second one from the first one. But at the same time, I could do these two operations at the ones by just multiplying one of the equations is a constant and add this into the another one. So let's, let's, let's try to do this. If I would like to eliminate this 2x1 from the second equation, what I would do is I would multiply, multiply 
the first equation, the first equation, 2 minus 2, and add this, add this to the second. To the second equation. So let's try to do this together so, and see what we are going to have actually. Let's pass this equation again. So here, what I would like to do is I would like to multiply the first equation, the first equation. So let, let me denote the first equation as the equation one. So the first equation is going to be multiplied to the minus t and added to the second equation. So if I do this, what I have? So the first and the third equation are going to remain the same. And what I will, I'm just going to copy them. So x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 is equal to the 9. 3x1 plus 6x2 minus 5x3 is equal to the 9. What happens with the second equation is that, so if I would multiply the first equation, to the minus t. It's going to be minus tx1 plus tx1. So it's going to be simply 0 here, right? So this uh, 2x2 minus 2x2 plus 4x2 is going to be plus 2x2 here. Again, I'm multiplying all the terms of the first equation to the minus t and immediately adding this to the second equation. Then if I would multiply this term to the minus t, it would be minus 4x3. If I add this to the minus 3x3, it's going to be minus 7x3. If I multiply, I have to do the same with the, uh, with the right hand side, but with the free coefficients as well. If I would just multiply this to the minus t, it's going to be minus 18. Plus 1, it's going to be minus 17. And this operation also doesn't change the set of solutions for the system of linear equations. And the reason why we're doing is that we would like to eliminate one of the variables. And again, the same solution, x1, x2, x3, remains for this system as well. So in this sense, these two system of linear equations are interchangeable or equivalent. Obviously, they are different now because we've changed lots of numbers, but they are equivalent. And when we say that they're equivalent, we mean that the same solution, so the same set of numbers, x1, x2, x3, would solve both of these equations. And what we would like to do is we would like to introduce this kind of operations to the matrices. So if you remember, I could just write down the system of linear equations in a matrix form. We call that matrix as an augmented matrix. So let's introduce this operations to the matrices. So let's do this operations. With the augmented matrix. So if you remember, uh, I, I'm just going to copy again the system. I could write down the system of linear equations as an augmented matrix, where I would just copy the coefficients before x1, x2, and x3 from the first equation. It's going to be 1, 1, 2. From the say, second equation, 2, 4, minus 3. From the third equation, 3, 6, minus 5. And additionally to the three coefficients, I would just copy the right hand side part as the fourth column. It's going to be 9, 1, and 0. Okay, so now I'm going to introduce the three operations again. The first operation is interchanging the rows of this matrix. Interchanging rows of this matrix. So if do you remember, I could just like interchange the two equations. The first equation was the second equation. So if I would just have one augmented matrix here and another augmented matrix for this system of linear equations, what would be different between this augmented matrix and this augmented matrix is that their rows would be interchangeable. And well, like, I'm going to do this here. 
So I will have this augmented matrix. So I'm going to copy this augmented matrix and pass this to here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to interchange the first row with the second. So the notation wise, I'm going to do this in this way, like uh, the, the first row is going to be interchanged from the second row. So it is really important that we are going to row, write down what we are doing. Okay, so later on, when we are going to do an elementary row of operations over the augmented matrix in order to solve the, solve the system of linear equations, we have to always write down what we're doing. So it will help us to track the operations we are doing. So I'm going to uh, interchange the first row with the second. And what I will have here is 2, 4, minus 3, 1. 1, 1, 2, 9. 3, 6, minus 5, 0. And this is going to be the first row of operations, which is valid. And whenever we say that this is valid, it means that it doesn't change the solution of a system of linear equations. And again, the matrix wise, so if I would say, hey, is this matrix equal to this one? Are these matrices equal? So equality of the matrices mathematically means that every single element is going to be the same in both of the matrices in the, in, in the position wise. So while here, so this element is not equal with this one, right? So, I mean, these matrices are not equal, obviously. But what is equal is that the solution for this system of linear equations and solution for this system of linear equations are going to have uh, are going to be equal, so the same solution. So that is why this row operation is valid. We've just discussed this and and pre uh, uh, discussed this operation with the system of linear equations. So the second operation which we can do is we can just multiply one of the rows as a constant, multiplying a row to a constant. And again, like I'm, I'm just going to pass the, the system, the augmented matrix, and now I'm going to write this down my operation. So, hey, I would like to multiply one of the rows to the constant. For example, I can multiply the third row to the one over two, the third row to the one over two. You see, so I'm, I'm denoting the rows as the R and index is going to be mean the number of the row. The third row can be multiplied to the 1 over 2. 1, 1, 2, 9. 2, 4, minus 3, 1. Uh, 3 over 2, 3, minus 5 over 2, and 0. So don't ask me why I'm just multiplying the third equation to the 1 over 2. So... <laughs> I'm just doing this because to, to show you that this is valid operation. And again, so these two matrices are not equal, but they are going to have the same solution. Solution is going to be the same. And the last operation, which is like the most important one, I would say, is the multiplication of a row can be added to the another row. Again, a multiple of a row, a multiple. Whenever we say the multiple of a row, it means that a row is multiplied to some constant. A multiple of a row is added into another one. And now it is also really important how we are going to denote this operation. So I'm going to pass this augmented matrix again. So again, so if you remember, we have eliminated x1 from the second equation, right? So in terms of the augmented matrix, what I have to do is I need to make this 2 to be equal to the 0. In order to do this, I, so I, I could multiply the first row to the minus 2, 
then I could just add the first row to the second, but I could combine these two operations and do this at once. And I'm going to denote this operation in this way. So the first row is going to be multiplied to the minus two and added to the second row. So please note that this, this R2, where we are adding, should be always with the index one. So here, there should be always one. I can just multiply the first row to some constant, another row to another constant, and then add them. So it is always, you multiply one of the rows to the constant and add this to the second one. So if I do this here, what I would get? So I'm going to keep the first and the last rows are the same again. So 1, 1, 2, 9, 3, 6, minus 5, 0 are going to be the same. Now, I'm going to multiply the first row, all of the numbers here, to the minus 2, and add them right immediately to the second. So if this min uh, 1 is multiplied to the minus 2, it's going to be minus 2. If I add this to the second, it's going to be 0 here. This 1 is multiplied to the minus 2, it's going to be minus 2 again. If I add this to the second, it's going to be 2. This 2 multiplied to the minus 2, it's going to be minus 4. If I add this to this minus 3, it's going to be minus 7. And this 9 is multiplied to the minus 2, it's going to be minus 18. Added to the 1, it's going to be minus 17. So this is what we call as the multiple of multiple of the R1 is added to another root, to the second root. And again, these two matrices are different. But the solution for both of the system of linear equations, corresponding system of linear equations, are going to be the same, the same solution. So the three row operations are really important. They might seem to you they are simple, but at the same time, they are really powerful in order to solve a system of linear equations. So in our next video lectures, we are going to discuss the algorithms on solving the system of linear equations using this row operations.